Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Greetings. This is the second video lecture in a series of lectures that I'm uploading to discuss about the concept of inverse functions. I will be presenting this lecture at the curriculum of uh, <coughs> College Algebra and Theory Calculus, but a freshman calculus student and also high school student can also benefit from them. Now, if you have not yet watched the previous lecture, I strongly encourage you to do so. And in the comment section, I will be providing the site link of these videos. And you can also look at my channel to look for it. Okay, then let's get started, shall we? Now, with respect to equality, which is an equivalence relation, 3 plus 2 equals to 5, and 5 minus 3 equals to 2 are equivalent. They are paraphrase of one another. Now, with respect to the operation of addition and subtraction, they are inverse of one another. So on one hand, they are equivalent, they are paraphrase on a, of an, one another. On the other hand, they are, in a sense, inverse of one another. One of them undo the action of the other one. Now, algebra is a, a general, generalization of arithmetic. So I have selected an easy example to demonstrate the idea before I go to some examples that they are a bit more uh, I wouldn't say advanced and so sophisticated, but I say a little bit more involved that coming in the coming uh, videos. Now, here, y equals to 3x, and I also told you how to read it. You read it, y is a function of x with the rule of correspondence between x and y to be y equals to 3x. Now, y equals to 3x and x equals to y over 3 are equivalent. They have exactly the same graph. By the way, when you use the word graph, the student always think about the, the drawing graph, the, the geometrical graph, the analytical geometry of the graph. But the graph in 2D means set of order pairs. That's the meaning of the graph. So in order to distinguish them, I do mention analytical graph and geometrical graph and to distinguish between them. Now here, y is equal to 3x and x equal to y over 3 are equivalent. They have exactly the same analytical graph and they also have exactly the same geometrical graph. Of course, if they have same analytical graph, they must also have same geometrical graph. Now, if, we, if I interchange the rule of correspondence between x and y, the interchange, instead of writing y equal to 3x, I say x equals to 3y, the rule of correspondence between x and y has changed, then the graph of them, either analytical or geometrical graph of them, they will not be identical. You follow me? But there is a good relation between them. There is a good relation between the graph of y equal to 3x and the graph of x equal to 3y. And that's what we are going to look at. Okay. Now, I guess I go to... By the way, I have written them. If you like to keep notes, because some students, they, I don't know, they always like to, to write. And some of them, they never open to and read those notes. Okay. Now, I go to second one, if I may. Now here y is, uh, f of x is a function of x with the rule of correspondence. I have written some of the elements of the, of the analytical graph of that, some of them, like 1, 3, 2, 6, and so on. All right? Now, if I interchange in the graph, the graph of this one, which is set of order pairs, x1, y1, x2, y2, and so on. If I interchange x and y for each order pair of this set, like 1, 3, I write 3, 1, 2, 6, I write 6, 2, and so on and so forth. For all of them, 
I get the graph of this one, x equal to 3y. Do you follow me? And vice versa. That's very fascinating. That is the relation I see between them. Now, this motivates the idea that we can do the very same thing in geometrical interpretation, which means we interchange the vertical and horizontal axis and then we should be able to get the graph of the, of the what, of the, uh, uh, if, if you have graph of this one, we can get the graph of this one. So one of the graph can be obtained from the other one. Now, in order to do that, what I have done, so we have done, if you like to like notes, please do, feel free to do so. Now, don't forget what is our motivation. This idea gave us a very good motivation to go for the geometry. Now, I have already sketched the graph using, you know, points that we are used to it. And I know how the graph of them looks like, both of them. The graph of the y equals to 3x is this. And the graph of x equals to 3y is this. So I know the, how the graph of them look like. All right? Now I want to see what I can do to this the graph of this or what can I do to this to graph of this one? They are very nice related because the analytical set, analytical uh, graph of them did indicate such a thing. So we want to test it for geometrically. You follow me so far? Okay, then let's see how we do that. Now, I interchange the, the you know, with respect to the origin. Let me go here. I don't think I need to uh, zoom it because I have watched the other videos. They are kind of visible, uh, readable. The, the, I have written large enough to see that. Now, if I interchange X and Y as I did, you remember the, the, the uh, what is it, the analytical graph, I change each order pair. So I interchange, not change, interchange. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. So with respect to the origin, zero, zero, the whole plane, not x, y only, the whole plane I will rotate it to replace x, uh, to interchange uh, the vertical axis to the horizontal and horizontal to vertical. Look what I do. Now I did the clockwise or counterclockwise, doesn't matter really. All right? This is what it comes. Then I look at my graph that I have already sketched it, and I see, no, this is not the case. I rotate, I change X and Y, was not the same. So I look at it again, that's what mathematics is. Think, reflect, contemplate. So I look at that and I say, hey, look at that. The arrow shows here that what, that the Y axis is here, but the arrow of the X axis before was going straight north, now he's going straight south. You see that, huh? Let me, uh, if I may, let me make it larger. You can see the arrow, huh? This arrow and this arrow. Now, what I do for this one, I look at it and I see if I take the plane and rotate it with respect to the horizontal axis, 180 degree and see what I can come up with. Trial and error, huh? discoveries. I do that. Bingo! Lo and behold, look at that, fantastic. I did get the graph of what? The graph of x equals to 3y. You see that? I got the graph of that. So from the graph of this one, I got the graph of this one. But the graph of this one, the original graph, I didn't distort it. I just rotated it and reflected it, is that right? So what I'm get, getting this graph and the original graph, they are congruent. They are more than similar. They are congruent to one another. That's very interesting, isn't that? Geometrically, they are congruent. But they are located in different locations. Look, you know, if you have a picture and somebody comes, uh, wants to play prank or joke with you and he turns it, let's say, uh, 180 degree rotated to the right, your head was off, your feet was down in the picture, now your head is to the east and your feet is to the west. 
big deal, huh? but you will be recognized as you were before, no difference. And if you <coughs> take that one and reflect it about the middle uh, uh, axis, about the horizontal axis, then what you get is a, is a, is a mirror image, but mirror image of rotation and reflection. Is a, is a kind of a little bit different mirror image. And we will say that that mirror image will be with respect to the y equal to x, the identity function, that mirror image, that, that could be the mirror, because what will be the mirror is important. So if you do that as a prank to do somebody's picture on the wall, and you do that, rotate and reflect, what you get, you get the um, uh, rotation reflection mirror image of the picture of the original picture. But the picture is the same. The picture is the same. So in another world, look what happens. So beautiful. This and this are inverse of one another in one sense, and they are absolutely, absolutely congruent in another sense. Geometrically, they are congruent. Okay, now let's demonstrate this one in 3D. I like that one. Always do the thing that a student can stay hopefully for the rest of their life. Now look at this one. I have the, the graph that I sky. Let's take this one out. You are hopefully comfortable with this. Uh, you remember what I did? I rotated clockwise, or doesn't matter, counterclockwise will give the same answer. So here, here, this is the graph. Uh, let me see. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> no. Ay, 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 ay. Now look. This is the graph of this one. You see that? Exactly. With two pencils and put some, um, some uh, super glue and uh, build it up. You see that? This is the same graph. And this is a bicycle I spoke, I had to break one of them. You see that? Fantastic. Now look what happens. I rotate it about the origin. All right? Then I reflect it. 90, uh, 180 degrees. Look at that. Isn't that fascinating? Exactly the same graph. You follow? These are, because I didn't do anything. This is the same. I didn't distort that one, I didn't break it, I didn't bend it. So this graph remains same. So a function and its inverse, in a sense, they are same. They are congruent to one another, but the orientation of them has been changed. That's exactly what it happens. Then we go to composing of them, composition of functions. We will see something beautiful comes out that we call it identity function. Another function is created from that, in fact. Isn't, fascinating? Isn't that fascinating? It's just fantastic. Now I have another demonstration to make for you. Um, pretty good for demonstration now because it gives you depth deep into the subject. Now look at this one now. Fantastic. Uh, ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, by the way, let me put the background of that one to be wide so that the picture will be more uh, visible. Uh, sorry for the primitive stuff I have. But the animation is pretty good, but unfortunately I don't have the art. I don't believe, I like to learn it someday so that I can write the animation, uh, anim <laughs> animation program for that. But I know there are some software for that, but I haven't got the chance to learn it yet. That is my, my plan for something soon in future. So let me make the background of that void so that we can see it better. Now, this, I hope that is visible for you. This is the graph of y equals to 3x. This is the graph of y equals to 3x. Do you follow me? Now, look what I do. I rotate it with respect to the origin with respect to zero, zero, I rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. How much? 90 degree. Look at that. I do that. No, I hope the bottom part you can see. Now the arrow, you see the Y has replaced the 
uh, the, the vertical axis has replaced the wall, has been changed to horizontal axis. And horizontal axis, as you can see, the arrow is toward the south. Before it was toward the north. Oh, you see that, huh? Let me bring the little orb, you can see it. Now I reflect it with respect to the horizontal axis, and look what happens. Isn't that fascinating? I get the graph of the x equals to 3y. You see that, huh? I'm not on your way. I get the graph of x equals to 3y. You see that? This graph is the, we call it inverse in reality. You follow me, everything clear? Let me stay out of your way. All right, then, you can always have the opportunity to pause and to look at it in more detail. Now, this is my final, I put it here, and that is uh, uh, now this rotation and uh, I have written for you. This rotation and reflection that I just demonstrated is universal, meaning that every relation, you notice that I didn't say function, every relation, because every function is a relation, but every relation is not a function, the converse is not true. So every relation whatsoever with this technique of rotation about the origin, reflection about the horizontal axis will give the inverse of that relation. Isn't that fascinating? 100% guarantee. Now, in the videos to come, I'm going to demonstrate the idea with functions that they are not as simple as this one. Maybe they are curved or maybe they look a little uh, different. And see, the idea is absolutely the same. The rotation and reflection, it gives you the inverse. So in the test, you can cheat. I'm teach, teaching you how to teach. If the teacher gives you a function and asks you what is the inverse of that, just draw the function, rotate it about the, the origin, 90 degree clockwise or counter, counter clockwise, then reflect it and look at the light to see how it looks like and make it a little bit darker, your line, and what you get the inverse of that. You finish and give it to the teacher. So you don't have to go through the y equal to x axis. Now, y equal to x has more meaning in that and has geometrical justification formula that we will be covering in the videos to come. Okay, then, I thank you for watching, and as always, I wish you all prosperity and good health. Please stay safe. And I will be seeing, you will be seeing me soon in the coming videos. So long.